Hi friends, welcome to Automation with Python Scripting presented by Narendra from Do with Python Technologies. Friends, before going to start our session, I want to know uh, your skills uh, like current working skill and in case if you are having any previous skills along that your experience so that I can modify my demo and I will go with that. Yeah, yes, please. Go one by one. Ah, okay, guys. <clears throat> now we are going to start our session. And before going to start our session, uh, what is the agenda for uh, today's session? So our agenda is first thing we'll discuss about what is automation, then why it is required, and how automation can be achieved. For automation, why Python only? What is Python and its features? Then we'll go with who uses Python, then different versions of Python, and what is AWS automation, and some of the demo scripts. And finally, we will see what is the syllabus I am going to cover for my course. Okay, you okay, guys, without any delay, I am going to start my first concept that is what is automation. So almost all of you know about automation, right? I think all are having experience, so they know about automation. Okay, anyway, see, so simple definition I am going to give for automation is it is a process by which we can complete any task with less human intervention or without human intervention. See, suppose uh, in order to do complete some task, if you are having a, some code, right? In order to run that code, you need human intervention. But sometimes, even you can run your code, whatever you are having code for your task, that you can run some tools with the help of some tools. Then in that tool, suppose if you fix your time or what time you want to execute your script, once if you fix, then at that time, your tool will take care about how to execute and what time it has to execute, right? So uh, in that case, manual in intervention is not required. Okay. And the thing is that, again, I want to give some more clarity and automation. Suppose you are having some server, guys. Just assume. On that server, you want to complete uh, some task. Let me take suppose patching. I want to complete patching for my server suppose or one of the application on my server. Just assume for your uh, patching you require suppose 10 steps. I mean you need to execute manually step by step. Those steps are suppose 10 steps. Now each step Right, you have to write required code and you create command and you need to execute it. So manually you have to execute 10 different commands suppose one by one. But instead of that, if you place these 10 steps in a file, I say that is called a script, in a file, right? And you will take care how to execute and uh, what after what step, after, after how, may, uh, how much time it has to execute and what basis the next step should be executed. Everything we will take care about it and we write that for that code in this file. Okay, now you will run only this script. This script will take care about these 10 steps. That is nothing but simply automation. But of course, if we, when you will go with the scripting or coding concept means whenever there is a repetitive task means or uh, a daily or weekly or monthly if you are going to complete some task again and again then instead of executing daily weekly or monthly same steps in that case we will go and write some script some code and we will execute that script okay and of course on one server to execute 10 steps is very easy even though if you want to manually execute 10 steps on this server okay right manually you can execute it no problem Suppose in real time, you may have thousands, ten thousands of servers, right? 
now in order to execute on each and every server it's time taking process so compared to 10 steps instead of executing 10 steps executing one step one script is better right so that's why you are going with automation now just i'm going with the one uh, step ahead that is with the tools also suppose just assume you are having thousand servers in your environment in your organization for your infrastructure if you want to execute on 10,000 servers or 1,000 servers, these 10 steps, on each server you have to execute 10 steps. Each server 10 steps. Each server 10 steps. So it's time taking. Instead of that, to reduce only 10 steps, you are writing script. Instead of executing 10 steps, you are writing a script and again you have to execute this script on each and every server one time. Right? On each and every server, you have to execute it. So instead of running your script on each and every server manually, if you go with configuration management tools like Chef, Puppet, Ansible, HPSA, right? There, what will happen? Generally, in your infrastructure, all servers will connect to one of the server where the configuration management software has been installed all servers whatever the servers you are having in your organization all servers are connected with this server on this server you are having configuration management software or tool now instead of running your script on each and every server on each and every server you just place your script on this software this software at a time parallelly it can run on all servers at a time that means instead of executing your script on thousand servers thousand steps is required right on each server you have to execute your script of course you have to copy your script to, into that server also right there are some steps required now even though if you want to run simply your script on each and every server ten thousand times you have to execute your script but if you are having a concept of if you know about configuration management tools your 10,000 servers will be connected to this configuration management tool like Ansible, Puff, Chaffet, Salt, HPSA. On this server, you will run your script. This configuration management tool will take care about your script and this software will run your script on all 1,000 servers at a time. So that manual work is completely reduced almost 99%. Right? So that is the advantage with automation and that is the concept of automation. Okay? Now you can understand why automation is required, right? Simply in general words to reduce manual work. Okay? Now I am going to give some points to understand about this automation. Right? See, to improve productivity. See, suppose if you want to install some or uh, deploy some application on 1000 servers manually, just assume on each server in order to deploy some application, it will take around suppose 10 minutes. Then, then if you are having 1000 servers, 10,000 minutes are required. But instead of that, if you have a script, and all servers are connected to some automation tool then if you run your script on that automation tool within 10 minutes you can able to complete your deployment on all servers guys that is the ideal case but of course while uh, deploying your while uh, de i mean running your script from automation tools there may be some issue okay or uh, your first before going to execute your script you should have uh, your script must be tested right so we are going with ideal case but complete ideal case is not possible while doing with practical right okay so because of that you can able to improve productivity then second thing is accuracy in data handling suppose if you want to execute some steps to perform some task again and again while entering manually the commands maybe uh, suppose instead of uh, executing some command find you may write some form it's not that, but it, it may 
while because we are humans while entering definitely we may do some mistakes but once if you have a script and if it is tested then that script will never do mistakes so that is already fixed with commands the only thing is you have to run it and that's it right so while executing uh, while completion of your task you will get accuracy in data handling with your scripts or with your automation and finally these two are the advantages for your company not for us because because of automation employee power is reduced for the company that is the advantage for them not for us but of course we have to work for them then we need to learn automation to sustain in market right so finally i can say it's a simple better right faster and cheaper that's it that's why automation is required okay the next concept is how automation can be achieved of course we know uh, automation can be achieved using scripting languages right or with coding but, but basically that coding language is called scripting language and there are so many scripting languages are there in order to perform your automation okay and latest one is golang this is from google and finally we are having python script you can select any one of the scripting language but whenever if you are going to select uh, any scripting language you should uh, think about which one is the best one <coughs> okay now uh, i feel that python is the best one but maybe you feel that shell scripting is the best one right but i can say if you feel shell scripting is the best one then shell scripting is valid only on unix like systems it's not valid on windows operating system right suppose if you go with python script python script is valid on both uh, unix like operating systems ios operating system and even with windows operating system the same script you can run on all uh, different types of operating systems actually python is platform independent okay uh, we know that uh, with the help of uh, scripting you can able to reduce the number of steps so you can achieve automation but not completely and in order to in order to get uh, complete automation right you require some tools as well like hpsa Yeah, puppet, right? Ansible, Assault, any tool, or even cron job is also a tool. It is the default with your uh, Unix like operating systems, right? Cron job. Just schedule the time. You just to schedule your time in cron job. That cron job will uh, run your script based on your scheduled time. So basically, these automation tools are required. Uh, to trigger your script that's it so even though if you are having tools automation tools you can't achieve automation with the without uh, your scripting concept right first you should good at the scripting language then you can run your script through automation or tools see why we are placing automation tools means basically not to run your script on all servers instead of running manually on all servers in that case we are going with automation tools okay basically with the help of scripting you are going to get uh, automation okay okay then for automation why python only yes you can use uh, shell scripting and also python scripting okay but why python only see i can say that uh why python only means because basically python is not designed for uh, either automation or application development it's, it is a general purpose programming language it is designed for uh, it is not designed for any specific purpose means this is uh, this python is only for this right suppose if you go with shell scripting shell scripting is better for system administration because they developed that for system administration but python is not like that it is not for any specific purpose it is designed for general purpose so that's why we can use python anywhere in real time anywhere in your 
organization i mean in your it wherever you want python yes you can use it there are so many concepts are there with python using that by concept you can use it anywhere in real time okay so why uh, and see we can do anything with python like web development gaming apps testing selenium testing that is like automation automation testing with selenium testing automation with selenium and also you can do web scraping text processing data analysis data analytics data science and even in artificial intelligence we can use python that much power is there with python we know that nowadays ai is the most trending concept even that is developing with python only you can write your code in ai using python and finally automation is one of the concept in your python that automation means like you can do any general automation like database administration or linux administration windows administration or any web app server administration right web server administration you can do any administration work using python so that you can automate it that whatever the task you are going to work do in your uh, require in your particular administration those tasks you can automate with python okay so simply any administration task you can write code in python so that you can make that as an automation and you can also use in that um, or one of them is aws even in aws administration also you can use python that's it so simply you can automate tasks of course you can create games or solve real world problems with python okay okay guys any doubts up to now yeah we are not covering web development concepts so we are uh, what we cover at, i will uh, discuss at the end okay for web development you need to take uh, some different course along with python Yeah, everything I will discuss at the end of the uh, this course, this demo. Okay, guys. Next concept is various applications. I mean, where you can use Python or uh, current nowadays in different places they are using Python. What are this? See, web scraping. Using Python, you can do web scraping. Means uh, from uh, without opening your browser with the URL. If you want to get some web data, you can get your web data in Python using some modules like request beautiful soap right or url link so there are some modules are there for that particular concept then testing you are also doing testing uh, with uh, python but for that selenium is one of the module in python using that module you can complete your selenium testing with python then if you come to web development in web development yes use, using python you can do web applications But for that, you have to learn about uh, Django and Flask modules in your Python. And suppose if you want to work with the data analysis, then you have to go to Pandas. Pandas is one of the module in Python. You should know that is basically third-party module. You should know about that Pandas in order to work with data analysis. Same way, suppose if you want to work with some AI, artificial intelligence, then you should know more modules like uh, matlab plot lib mod module numpy module pandas module scientific modules are there you should know about those modules then only you can work with the ai artificial intelligence concepts so these are the various applications you can uh, develop or you can work with python so as of now who are using python see these are the some of the organizations they are using python effectively for their uh, maybe for web scraping or web development for automation okay so there are so many lists are there these are the mostly important uh, organizations they are effectively using python okay then if they are using then python should have some features right 
if any if anything is famous means you should have some particular qualities then only it will be famous right if that qualities are useful then that is the, that will become famous now if we come with python right first thing python is an interpreted object oriented high level programming language created by guru van rosa interpreted uh, right uh, we are having basically languages like interpreted languages and compiled languages then what is the difference first uh, between those two languages guys can i expect answer for this what is the difference between interpreted and compiled language yes c is the compiled one okay but what is the difference between uh, c i mean not like c compiled and interpreted languages okay i will go with that one see just assume you are having some 10 lines of code so as of now i am saying that uh, suppose you are saying that c is the compiled language and suppose i am saying that python is the interpreted language in both languages i am having 10 lines of code just assume suppose in third line on somewhere uh, sixth line you are having errors just assume you are having some errors in third and sixth line now if you run your program with uh, c right if it is a c program it will run your entire program at a time and it will give the list of errors and there are suppose at 3 and 6 right it will give those two errors but whereas in interpreted languages if you run your program it will run from top to bottom of course but while running it it will encounter it will give only the first occurrence error so first time if in first line if there is no error then it will go to next line if there is no error then it will go to next line suppose in third line we are having error then your python program stops there it, it terminates your program and it will give the there is error at line number 3 it won't check the bill number below the the rest of the lines and once if you rectify this error then it will go to fourth line fifth line again in sixth line you are having some error then it will stop there it will give that error if you corrected that then it will go to up to tenth line so that is the difference between interpreted languages and compiled languages okay of course uh, compared to a uh, compiled languages interpreted languages are somewhat slow okay yeah uh guys i got a question that python is it programming language or scripting language okay guys uh, before going to that guys do you know about uh, uh, what is scripting language and what is a programming language yeah we are using scripting languages in automation yes that that's correct then what is the difference between programming and scripting languages programming language we use to develop applications yes right yes we are using programming language suppose to develop software or app applications okay and even web development we will use it in at back end side right okay okay guys i will come with that see basically scripting language is nothing but if a language is able to communicate with other programming languages or other softwares then that is like that language is called scripting language see you are having some language that language is able to is able to communicate with other either programming languages or softwares let me give the simple example i think all of you know about unix like systems right there we are having some commands of course you are having even on windows also right but i am going with uh, unix your unix operating system suppose build with c++ and python okay that is a software your operating system is a software of course that is built with some programming language okay now 
you can if if you want to do some modification suppose i want to create a folder or a directory or a file on my operating system yes you are going and you, you can create using some mktar or using some vator files or using touch command you can create a file so basically with the existing default operating system whatever the directory structure is there you are going to modify that directory structure with the help of mkdir command or with the help of touch command you are going to create one extra folder or you are going to create one extra file that means you are doing something modification on your existing operating system now your commands using commands you are writing some language right shell programming that is scripting language so commands are a, with the help of commands you are going to develop shell programming basically that is not a shell program that is a scripting language now if you come to python using python also you can able to do that type of actions if you want to create a directory or file or if you want to stop a process if you want to start a process if you want to delete a file yes you can do everything with python that means you are able to modify something on other software or with other programming languages so that's why python is called scripting language but basically python is not designed for scripting purpose i mean not for automation purpose i initially i told that python is a general purpose so using python you can able to develop web applications so you only told that right guys so programming languages are used to develop some applications yes with the help of python you can develop some applications as well so python is a programming language as well as scripting languages see most of the programming languages they will support for automation also okay see your unix like operating system they are building with the help of python as well so in that case you can treat python as a programming language but at the same time using that python only you can able to do some modifications on your operating system not only on unix like even using python you can do some modifications on windows operating system as well right so with that concept you can call python uh, is a scripting language but python supports for both programming as well as scripting concepts that's it guys and it is a object oriented means it is having oops concept we know that if any language is uh, support uh, supporting for oops then definitely that is a good language right because we we, need, we can create real time objects using oops concept and it is a high level so normal english words that's it okay in case uh, see if you are a beginner if you don't know anything about programming concept then in order to learn a programming if you start with uh, python then it's better to learn any programming language once if you learn python then you can learn any other languages very easily okay because python is designed uh, in that way it's where it is having very simple syntax you can very easily understand python so once if we are having a knowledge on any one of the programming language then you can understand other program languages very easily that's it nothing is there so it is the best choice for the beginner beginner program okay now i am going with the features of python very first one is free and open source what is free and open source so you no need to require license to install your python software directly go with the official website python.org download your required version and install it that's it and open source that means you can able to see the source code of your python how they developed that you can see that see basically uh, if you come with linux like operating system or linux kernel that is a open source that's why based on uh, requirements of our organization they can able to modify some source code kernel they can change the they can make changes in kernel because that is a open source so python is also open source you can do that and it is easy to learn because of uh, its very simple syntax 
okay and code length is very short so i suppose if you know other languages like c c++ java uh, if you want to simply write a, a very basic program that is hello world program in c if you want to write hello world program you required suppose first you have to start with hash include stdio.hsh then main function inside that you have to write some print hello world at least three lines are required but whereas in python only single line print hello world that means you are able to reduce the code length if you write same program in python so definitely for each and every program whatever you are having in c if you want to if you write same program either from c or c++ or java if you write all those programs in python definitely you can able to reduce your code length so that is also one of the advantage or feature of your python then platform independent means you can uh, suppose if you are going to write some script on windows same script you can go and run on unix operating systems so that is the concept of platform independent then it support for uh, both procedure oriented and object oriented concepts so procedure nothing but suppose functions and oops so we will see in detail uh, what is the procedure and uh, what is oriented uh, i mean object oriented we will see that in our classes so any language if it is having oops as well as functions then that is a powerful yes python also supports for that then lots of third party modules are available and nothing is that let's just assume third party module is like a predefined program suppose just assume if you want to create a file okay for that you no need to write uh, code already there is a third part already someone who develops that third party communities or the developers some simple program you just use that program into your python so that you can reduce your uh, code length so those are called third party modules that type of third party modules are there with your python and that to lots of third party modules they are around 120000 now you can imagine 120000 modules each module is for specific purpose already 120000 programs are there predefined programs anybody can use that program directly for their uh, uses in their work that means you no need to write code from scratch just use that code import that code and use it in your script so that the code length will be reduced and a lot of time will be saved right so because of that of course python is popular basically so these are some of the features of your python and coming to your uh, different versions of python basically you are having in python three versions 1.x 2.x and 3.x of course 1.x is outdated now we are having only 2.x and 3.x and in 2.x we are having latest version suppose 2.7.14 and in 3.x we are having again three versions sorry two versions that is 3.6.x and 3.7.x it is in development it is already developed now you are having these two versions okay and for 2.x uh the support will end by 2020 up to 2020 you will get more support for 2.x okay after that 3.x will be there of course now also we are using both versions but compared to 3.x current nowadays 80% of the organization they are using 2.x for their automation or for uh, some application development what is the reason why still they are using 2.x means see 120000 modules i told those modules are there with your python right those are completely available for 2.x version but in 3.x uh, there are uh, like around 30000 modules only still 90000 modules they have to develop to support in 3.x okay then immediately you have a question should i learn 2.x or 3.x nothing is there you can learn you can go with any one of these then what is the difference there are around 10 uh, syntax wise differences are there between 2.x and 3.x 
suppose if you write simply print statement in 2.x print is like a statement but in 3.x print is like a function so you know function like a parenthesis so this is the major difference suppose in 2.x compared to 3.x and likewise there are some differences are there with between with the 2.x and 3.x and in my coaching i will go with either 2.x or 3.x but choice is for students and my suggestion is okay my suggestion guys it's not uh, mandatory just i'm giving suggestion if you are good with 2.x then you can learn uh, you can understand very easily 3.x in one hour in one hour it's not a matter right you know to learn your python of course you are taking 30 to 35 hours once if you are good with 2.x if you know what are the difference between 2.x and 3.x and syntaxes if you know them the usage is same whatever the code and logic you are going to write in the same pro uh, in the same versions everything is same the only syntax wise if you are able to remember those uh, 10 syntaxes difference between 2.x and 3.x then you are good with both the versions okay and sometimes in 3.x see suppose if you go within 3.x there is a one function called range range of 4 basically it will give values 0 to 4 0 to 3 4 values but it won't directly print 0 to 3 values but whereas in 2.x it will give same function there it will print 0 1 2 3 4 values directly now in case if you know very well about uh, 2.x range function then you can easily understand 3.x range of 4 of course it is not giving values output it won't give it will give some object but you can still able to understand because you know already range function 2.x that's why you can easily understand range function in 3.x so because of this type of comparisons it's better to learn first 2.x so even if you search on uh, google what should i learn which version i should learn in python you will get a lot of suggestions and most of them are good with 2.x okay okay guys this is all about versions then our next concept is AWS automation. See guys, uh, again AWS automation nothing but uh, see in case if you want to start any server, right? You have to log into web browser. Then you have, to, I mean, you have to open browser. You have to provide credentials and you have to select some service. There you have to go and do your action. So there are a lot of steps. So instead of uh, doing some task again and opening your browser, if you have uh, some code. Right, you can run that code from your local host, from your local computer, so that your task will be done on your AWS account. So that is nothing but like AWS automation. And this automation can be done using these ways. You can go with any one of these ways. Okay. So in our coaching, we will go with uh, Python with Boto3. Of course, I will give how to use your AWS CLI commands with shell and our AWS CLI commands with Python. So in case if you are good with already shell scripting, and if you know AWS CLI commands, then you can use shell scripting with AWS CLI. Okay. Yeah, guys, I have a question here. What is the difference between shell and Python? Mm, nothing is there. See, both are used for uh, automation, of course. Along with the automation, Python will be used some other things. But if I give, suppose, uh, this concept, then you will be good with that. Uh, you will be happy for that. Let me give that concept. In case, if you are good with C, if you know some data structures like uh, arrays, right? And yeah, if, if you are good with, suppose, arrays, Okay, basically shell scripting is designed for administration purpose, right? And in case uh, if you want, whenever if there is a situation comes to use uh, like arrays and dictionaries, a data structure concept, then shell is not powerful with that concept. Then immediately you have to think about alternate language. Then that is Python. 
the data structures are used to write uh, like suppose if, if you go if you want to create a, some object then shell is not supporting shell is useful basically to run each and every command whatever you are running on your command line you can place all your commands in your shell script and you can work with that but other than that i mean shell is powerful with to use awk set command right but all commands you can still use in python whatever the task same commands exactly whatever the command whatever the command you are using for your required task same command you can execute with the python in case if you are good with the commands if you are good with shell script whatever the commands you are using in your shell script same commands for same purpose you can place in your python and in the execute that without having any issue you can execute that then basic difference nothing is that the, both, both are using for automation but uh, in shell we don't have data such as concept and we don't have oops concept and functions also uh, in shell script function is not returning i mean uh, function uh, it's not returning a value so generally if you are writing a function in any programming you are expecting something right but shell script won't return won't uh, give the return value from your functions that is the disadvantage and also data structures and also oops concept so those are there with python so that's why python is a better one compared to shell but in case if you are having time or if you are good with shell script then uh, you can very easily understand python whenever we are using commands uh, of your shell in python that's it what is boto3 yeah guys so boto3 is nothing but it like, like third party module and it is the like a one api or one library or one package using this you can uh, communicate with your aws account from your python program that's it so in order to work with your amazon web services your aws from python you have to use boto3 in case if you don't know boto3 if you are not willing to work with boto3 you can work with python with aws cli commands if you are good at aws cli commands same aws cli commands you can execute with your python in a programming way in a scripted way the aws cli commands only are straight forward and ad hoc like ad hoc commands right and command and you are going to execute but if you want to create a some script using aws cli commands yes you can use you can create a script either using python or shell but python is a better one but compared to aws cli and python it's better to learn python with boto3 so boto3 is especially designed for uh for your aws in order to communicate with your aws uh, using python you have to import boto3 module into your current program so that you can work with your aws account what guys what is that boto is the advanced version of boto3 no what is difference boto3 is different it's not a i mean it's not a versions in your boto uh boto again boto is also used to com communicate with your uh, aws i mean it's like interface right communication is nothing but it providing interface between your aws and your python program but boto and boto3 are not the versions uh, boto3 is different boto is different anyway now boto3 is the popular one you should learn about boto3 and you can execute your programs using lambdas right lambda is also one of the service serverless service from your aws right you don't know about lambda yeah no problem see simply yeah i am going to tell that what is lambda see lambda is basically uh, i can say simple words if you don't know anything about lambda lambda is like an editor your notepad what you will do with your notepad you will write something but in programming you write some code into lambda function i sorry in notepad same thing you will write in your lambda lambda is also like an editor in that you will write your code but what is the feature of lambda means lambda will execute your program as well suppose notepad won't execute your program but lambda will execute your program based on your language as of now lambda is going to support with uh, node js javascript python and c sharp 
and recently i think with golang as well yeah that's it guys and uh, now i will go with some demo scripts actually uh, one of the script i developed with uh, my previous batch so after completion of each and uh, each course basically we will go with some project okay let me open my project see this is my script actually this is to install git on your host we suppose if you want to install your git on your uh, host you should follow some prerequisites right and then you have to download uh, your git tarball then you have to configure it you have to make it you have to make install these are some steps right but if you want to install that uh, on different hosts then again you need to perform on each and every server the required steps but in order to automate i have written a some sorry we have written a script or this is for a mini project for my students those who completed in the last batch so it's around of course uh, 246 lines but once if you written this script then it will be helpful actually the purpose of this script is first it will check the uh, any git version is any git is there on your host if it is not there it will show that it, there is no git version if it is there then it will give that version after that what are the latest versions are there in git repository with git it will list it will display all the list right then you have to select any one of them and then it will install that let me copy this and this is my ec2 instance git installation dot py let me copy here now i am going to run that script see what will happen see as of now in case if i have any git version it will display otherwise uh, it says that there is no git so observe the information as well it is not installed as of now okay do you want to git install on this host enter say yes instead of yes, suppose if i write something then it will ask enter only yes or no right so by writing script you have to take care about each and everything what should uh, be the from uh, you are expecting from user while running your script so these are all the available versions as of now suppose if i select any one of the version right i am going to select 2.8.5 it will take some time to install your uh, git so meanwhile we will discuss something so finally it will complete your script guys it will go and complete yeah if you want to see you can see it i will wait so these are the requisites right when installing git manually you have to install all of them gcc like compiler right see even this output you can hide but I have uh, write uh, give different syntax to give the output. Instead of that, you can completely without opening anything, without uh, displaying anything on the command line, you can do your work completely with your Python scripting. Okay. The advantage is suppose if guys, if you know about uh, Linux commands or something basic about shell scripting, the same commands you can execute using uh, Python instead of writing Python code. Okay. Instead of writing some Python code, uh, same commands in case if you are good with the Linux cell commands, then same commands you can execute with the help of Python. That is the basically an advantage. So anyway, most of them, those who are working uh, uh, like Unix like operating system, they I think they know at least basics of commands, right? So whenever if there is a situation to use, uh, I mean to start or stop servers from your Linux then you can use uh, those commands in python that's actually better way okay now guys uh, it will be installed meanwhile if you have any queries you can go with them so we are not uh, providing uh, i mean web, your uh, web application development we are completely focusing on automation side what about data? Analyst and data science. 
data analyst yeah see it has been installed now right okay uh, now suppose if i run once again this program observe what will happen same script I am going to run once again. See now you are having some version, that version is displaying. Again, if you want to update it, you can go with that one. See if I say enter, observe what is the list of outputs you are going to get. See from 1.8.3, you are getting 1.8.4, updated versions it will show. See each and everything is like uh, ma manipulating in, in, into your script, that's it. So guys, this is the one of the script we developed recently and I'm going to exit from here. Now let me open my local host so that I can show one more script that is to automate your AWS services as well. Having okay. I'm having one of the script to start or stop. Yeah. Suppose if I enter this, guys, I'm running one of the script that is to start or stop your EC2 instances from your local host. See, this script will start or stop EC2 instances based on your required region and instance ID. Enjoy by using this script. So it's asking enter enter your region. See, of course you can uh, automate that region as well in your script itself but i want to read the region from command line so before going to read uh, let me know what is my region say us east one let me write that us east one now please write connect to your aws ec2 console it's listing all the instance ids in your region so as of now i'm having three instances on on my right on my region so it's giving all IDs. Now this script is basically to start or stop, right? It's giving to start or stop based on instance ID. So anyway, this instance is already running. Suppose if I try to run that instance, what will happen? Okay, I'm entering instance ID and I'm going to write start it. But already it is in running state, then what will happen? So its instance is already running. That's it. So while writing script, you have to take everything. Suppose you are going to stop a start a server. If it is already in running state, why should you start? So that's why in code itself you have to take care whether you need to start or stop based on that. Before you have to check whether it is in running state or stop state. Okay. Now I am going to enter uh, my instance ID for stop. Now see, please wait. It's going to stop. Once it is stopped, then we will let you know. So meanwhile, I will go open my command, I mean my AWS console and observe here. It's stopping. Once if it is completely stopped, then your script will say, say not stopped guys, it is stopping state. Stopper is different, stopping state is different, right? Please wait. Once if it is done, still it is in stopping state. So your script is not completed. Once if it is stop, let me refresh it. So now it's stop. Okay. So that is the uh, way to automate simple AC2 instance to stop or start a uh, services. Okay. Okay guys, this is from my side and what we are going to cover for my course is for uh, automation with Python, what we are going to cover. First we will cover basic, uh, I mean complete your Python scripting concepts. So these are the concepts we are going to cover for your Python. Once we are done with this, right, we will go, see guys, uh, some of them are looking for only Python scripting, right? So after completion of this course, 
we will implement some mini project okay and uh, anyway finally we will implement mini project but based on concept we will discuss real time situations as well whenever there is a situation to discuss about real time there we will discuss about real time then once if it is done those who are continuing with for aws automation then for them i am going to cover concepts like aws cli just i will provide basics of your aws cli and how to use those aws cli uh, in python as well as shell in case if you are good with that shell then uh, boto3 basically we will focus on boto3 and this boto3 basically we can write aws automation using resource and client method then we will discuss about lambda and triggers of lambda these are some of the triggering methods to lambda okay guys uh, if you have any queries you can ask what is the duration for python yeah basically i'm taking minimum 30 hours to complete python scripting but based on students it may be increases up to four or five classes what about fee details see guys uh, first three classes i am providing freely uh, free classes if you are uh, good with my classes if you are okay with that first three classes then only you can continue now to continue further then we will discuss about pay and you have to pay money then only you are uh, able to attend from fourth class onwards first three classes are completely free anybody can attend and they can listen they can have my classes in case if they are good with my teaching and if they are able to follow my teaching then only they can continue otherwise no problem simply you can come okay what about aws administration see guys i am not covering administration part we are only covering uh, automation part okay but <clears throat> Even I can give administration, but I can't provide 100% assurance of our administration side. I can give up to max 70%. Such that, that one of the things you should know how to write a script in Python. Yeah, that is the, in case if you want that, then on weekends I will take that. But you have to pay separate money for that. But already if you know AWS, then for them, we are providing AWS automation with Python and Boto3 it's minimum 20 hours yeah it's minimum 20 hours guys still any questions i want shell yeah we are we are also providing shell script ml scripting as well ansible automation with ml also we are providing So you want to learn shell, python and ml. No, my session, no need of uh, shell. Just learn basics. Even if you want to learn some basics, uh, you can go through my channel uh, for shell scripting. Basics, not complete guys. Uh, let me open my... Uh, one second. You can go with my channel to get some basics about shell scripting. I think it's not much required, but completely if you are a Linux admin or completely you are working on uh, Linux environment, then of course it's better to learn. Sorry. Yeah, you can go with this channel, IT automation with Python, normal and shell scripting, so that uh, they will give some basic idea. Do you want DevOps? Of course I can, but we don't have time to teach each and everything. If you want, uh, I'm having a trainer, extra trainer, uh, they will provide DevOps. Ansible. Yeah, from Ansible, I can teach from top to bottom. Each and every concept, I will go with an Ansible. Okay, guys, still any questions? Uh, I'm going to start this batch very soon. Uh, maybe in four or five days. 
i will let you know in case if you are interested you can ping me on my whatsapp about timings this is my whatsapp or my contact details guys you can contact through this either contact number or with my email id <coughs> guys sorry what is the question timings uh, based on students uh, what's their required time and if it is comfortable for me then i will go with that time okay once if you are interested then uh, uh, ping me on my whatsapp number so that we will schedule a plan okay yeah no problem uh, you can attend first uh, three classes freely guys no you don't bother about that after three classes uh, if you are able to understand with python and if you are following me if you are following my teaching then only you can continue with the course otherwise no problem simply you can drop okay then what about aws automation yeah in that also in aws automation first two classes are free of uh, with that two classes if you are able to understand uh, concepts or if you are following my teaching again you can continue otherwise you can drop this yes yes guys please okay guys very soon we are going to start this uh, new batch maybe within two or uh, i mean four or five days okay most probably i will start on wednesday basically on every wednesday i will start okay, anyway in monday you know uh, weekends they will go to home and they will come on monday and it's not possible to attend the classes right and tuesday sentiment right then basically i will uh, start new batch generally on uh, every wednesday whenever if i am going to plan for new batch then i will start it on wednesday yeah okay guys if you don't have any queries then uh, i am going to wind up this session yeah guys it's a recorded video i will share this yeah anyway i will post this into my youtube channel you can go and uh, have once again a uh, look on this okay guys bye sorry yeah we are providing ml scripting as well yes we are providing for that ml scripting in ml yeah we are working with aws as well only cloud uh, i mean in using ansible i am working with the cloud that is only aws cloud not other clouds i am good with aws cloud only using ansible ml scripting yeah suppose if you are we are you working with python using boto3 right the same way if you want to work uh, your aws using yaml you should know about at least uh, 10 more 100 modules you are having 100 modules in order to work with your aws cloud using your ansible ml scripting of course totally there are uh, around 1300 modules are there but for aws cloud i, I think 100 modules are there i won't cover uh, all 100 models guys i will see how to use and each and every module and i will go with some of the modules and i will write some scripts and i will show that i will execute them okay first uh, yeah anyway we are going to provide a demo on ansible ml scripting as well but if you are asking i am telling you that yeah we will go with first basically how to write uh, your playbooks okay with the first basic modules then based on situation in case if we come up with some requirement we will go with that otherwise i will take some modules okay and we'll go with them yeah no problem guys still any queries if you don't have i am going to wind up this session okay guys if you are really interested okay uh, you can contact with these details this is my whatsapp number and this is my email id i am always available with these two 
ओके बाय हैव अ नाइस डे